There's no way to get around the fact that the president and his team must understand that what they're doing to our military, to our foreign and defense policies more generally, um, will not only have a, a, an adverse effect on our capabilities, but on how our country's power is perceived. And you know, it's interesting that um, Saul Alinsky, a man who was uh, said to be an influential figure in Barack Obama's early career as a community organizer, distilled the essence of this point uh, very nicely in the first of his rules uh, in the book that he described or titled uh, Rules for Radicals. He said, quote, power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. And so I think it's worth just noting a whole series of steps that are being taken by the administration that is almost certainly going to convey to the enemy weakness. And as I've said many times before, unfortunately weakness breeds aggression. It invites, it tempts, it almost certainly uh, almost beckons people to engage in aggressive behavior against us, against our friends and allies, uh, against our interests, very broadly defined. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, the Obama administration is going to cut the military by 10 percent. Um, we know that the effect of that is going to be essentially to wipe out the modernization of the military, um, enabling um, the, the kind of uh, cuts in our future capabilities that our enemies could only dream uh, we would make the mistake of, uh, of effecting. Um, we will even see, I think, given the very substantial chunk of the defense budget that is now in fixed costs, as they call them, they're actually growing, for personnel, that the money is simply not going to be there even to rehabilitate the kind of equipment that we've been using in today's conflicts, let alone prepare for tomorrow's. Um, we've got the problem that uh, the administration has announced <clears throat> it's going to get rid of our nuclear deterrent. Um, it professes a desire to do that in some kind of bilateral way with the Russians or multilateral way, but it's taking steps that are exacerbating trends that have been underway for a long time that will result inevitably in the denuclearization of the United States. A very dangerous thing, especially at a time when everybody else on the planet, it seems, is getting into the nuclear weapons business, especially the most dangerous countries on the face of the earth. The president is engaged in a frontal assault on the military itself, I'm sorry to say, uh, when he says that he wants to repeal the law that currently bans homosexuals from serving in the armed forces. For lots of men and women in uniform today, including some of the most experienced of our commissioned and non-commissioned officers, that's going to be a deal breaker. Um, they're not going to serve in situations of forced intimacy with people who find them sexually attractive. Um, it will break the all-volunteer force. Again, I, I'm sure that our enemies are watching this with great relish and anticipating that the effect that this kind of action will have on the military will only increase um, the freedom of action that they will have. At the same time, we're seeing the administration signaling that we're going to get out of Iraq no matter what. Um, a deadline has been established. Uh, we're already beginning to see things starting to come a cropper. Uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq is uh, pronouncing victory. That's predictable. Um, jails are being uh, emptied of, uh, of insurgents who are going back into uh, business as destructive forces within Iraq. We are at the cusp, I'm afraid, of seeing the success that the surge achieved um, undone by uh, an Obama administration that is determined to wash its hands of uh, that very, very strategic success. 
similarly, uh, despite the surge of 17,000 troops, um, the signals coming out of the administration are that we're really not going to be in the Afghan campaign for very much longer. There's talk about finding moderate Taliban, as if there is such a thing, that we can turn the place over to. Um, not auspicious uh, for friends of the United States. In fact, I think it's pretty clear that <laughs> under the Obama administration, you're better off being an enemy of this country than one of its friends. That's especially true as our friends are now being uh, treated very shabbily. Uh, Israel is uh, essentially being told its, uh, its security is now uh, to be sacrificed to the creation of a Palestinian state, even one run by terrorist organizations, whether it's Hamas or even Fatah, that are bent on its destruction. Um, the Brits are being told the special relationship uh, no longer applies. There's nothing special about Britain, um, and they shouldn't expect to be treated in a special fashion. Um, we're, uh, we're watching others around the world, uh, from India to Colombia, um, being given sort of the, uh, the back of the hand treatment by the administration in ways that I, I think not only are gratuitously offensive, but are discouraging. Um, and alienating uh, at a time when we need all the friends we can get. Meanwhile, the administration is frantically trying to court um, every rogue state, every terrorist sponsoring nation, every actual or prospective enemy we have uh, with promises of normalized relations, with uh, commitments of uh, concessions of one kind or another, uh, with the hope that uh, they will prosper from the kind of preferential treatment that they've not enjoyed until now, and for good reason. The cumulative effect of all of this, I'm afraid, as Saul Alinsky would have said, is that our own power is being diminished, and the perception of our power is being reduced even further. Sadly, that will give rise to greater dangers for this country, not a more secure and prosperous world. Thanks for listening.